here and talk about the stuff that everyone wants to know. So yeah. what? how did you get into Princeton and MIT? Like, what did you how do? How did I do it? Yeah. So from the pretty much the beginning of high school, I sort of set out to take like the hardest classes accessible. And actually, this is like, this is not entirely true because I didn't pile on the APs as early as everyone. Mm -hmm. But I focused on heavily on science APs. Um, I think doing an Olympiad of some kind is extremely crucial. Mm -hmm. For like um, if you're going to yeah. or not, yeah. So part of the thing is that like, like colleges have sort of like, they've begun to like sort of like smell a rat when like someone like presents themselves as being like extremely well-rounded in every possible area. They're like part of every club. They've tried to get leadership positions in every club. But I mean, leadership positions are, are very good. But like if someone is just part of every club and they haven't really demonstrated much with each club, it says as much about the person as being part of no clubs. Yeah. So it, it really doesn't reflect on you as a person. And Olympiads are part of a way that like people can really like develop like a particular like like a huge spike in mm -hmm. one particular area that like makes you like definitely stand out above the rest. Yeah. Like, you become like you can you can become legitimately notable in this area, and that can be accomplished through research. Olympiads are a pretty fast way to do it actually, because <laughs> you just have to you just have to study. Yeah. It's not like a research project where, like, you know, it's it's very open-ended. It could be much more difficult than just, you know, learning content from some textbooks. Yeah. I mean, of course, you have to be very rigorous about your preparation. Like, I was doing maybe two practice tests per day for the Chemistry Olympiad at one point. Mm -hmm. And um, I actually, we had to read uh, an organic chemistry textbook for the Olympiad before we were preparing to go to the study camp for that Olympiad. Okay. Which was like top twenty in the country. You go off to there. Yeah. And uh, I had to read twenty three chapters of an organic chemistry textbook in two weeks. Oh. This was this was expected of us to be prepared by the time we got there. Wow. And I just had to you know had to do it. But like yeah. when they see that like someone has done this, it becomes very impressive to colleges. Perhaps more so than like trying to chop up your limited time between being different. mediocre at. Uh, 400 zillion things. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And um, so when did you manage to get to the top 20? That was junior year. Junior year? Junior year. Okay. Yep. So yeah. do you think that experience helped prepare you for MIT or? Definitely. I sort of like learned through the process that like chemistry was what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I developed really, really solid fundamentals. Okay. As well as like learning some like more advanced content from the camps and stuff. That yeah. Was helpful. But like everything. Of course, like, I, I sort of approach my chemistry classes at MIT with that content in mind. Mm -hmm. It really helps to have, like, a long-term depth of experience in terms of, like, thinking, thinking like a chemist. Mm -hmm. In the sense of, like, you, because you cannot, you can no longer just, like, memorize your way through things. <laughs> yeah. It takes, it takes time, which is unavoidable, to develop, like, the style of thinking okay. that goes in a true mastery of a subject. Okay. And um, so, apart from the chemistry Olympiad, what else did you do? So I did, I did, uh, I did Brain Bowl, mm -hmm. Brain Bowl, like academic competition. They probably call it Quiz Bowl <laughs> at other schools. Quiz Bowl. But uh, yeah, they covered pretty much everything, like science, math, technology, history, okay, even pop culture. And um, so, how many years did you do that? I did Brain Bowl all four years. All four. Years. I was president for two of them. Okay, that's nice. And so, then, yeah. did you do any other clubs? Besides that, I did a bit of move off of data, yeah. and uh, I was I was not the best at that. So <laughs> I just I was like kind of like a nominal member. I sort of participated in competitions, but I wasn't. I didn't really place regularly, mm -hmm. and I didn't practice for it. Okay, so it's all about practice. Yeah. <laughs> did you have any officer positions in there? Or? No, no, no. I was a, I was a rank and file guy. <laughs> So I also oh I also volunteered at the library for five years. It counts. It counts yeah. when they see that like you have like. A really long history of volunteering that looks really good okay so i was there yeah i was there since about since about sixth or seventh grade anyway um and then apart from rainbow and math team did you do anything besides this i would have to say no okay yeah you see i mean i got away with only two clubs yeah so <laughs> because i focused very on, hard enough. yeah on one thing yeah, yeah. so that's probably like the smartest way to go if you just really like something just yeah this it. is yeah. true if you if you know what you love like do it and don't let anything else distract you <laughs> from yeah. yeah 
thought everyone was gonna ask. So how many AP classes did you take roughly? Like you probably didn't oh, memorize. Shoot. Uh, yeah. If I if I'm counting it by number of AP exams that I took, mm -hmm. I think sixteen. Sixteen? Okay. Or fifteen. Mm -hmm. I can't remember. So one freshman year, AP World. Three sophomore year, that was Apes. Um, AP Chem, AP Stat. Then in junior year, I took six. Mm -hmm. AP Calc BC, AP Physics 1, AP Bio, A Push, AP Psych, and AP English Line. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then in senior year, I took five exams, which meant Gov, Econ, the two Physics C subjects, and AP Lit in mm -hmm. English. And yeah, that's so oh 15, 15, 15, 15 exams, 15 yeah, exams yeah, and like not 16. Adding it yeah. Up. Okay. 15 and not 16 exams. And then I took six college courses on top of that. Okay. So three per semester. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's right. Cool. And um so like in general, what did you get? <laughs> it's good. All fives. All fives. All fives. Cool. Did you take the ACT, SAT? So I took both the ACT and the SAT. The SAT I had a lot more experience for because I took it actually way back in about uh, sixth grade for um, the Duke TIP program. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I took it then, I got a decent score then. Maybe I could have gone to college off at that time, <laughs> but uh, I didn't, I didn't. Yeah. that wasn't necessary. So I got experience with that and then I took like the PSAT a bunch. So it's like mm -hmm. I was like steadily taking like different variations of the yeah. SAT repeatedly. And it just so happened that as I was going up through high school, like they wanted to test out a bunch of different things with the PSAT. Mm -hmm. So I wound up taking it like a zillion times. So when really? I took the actual PSAT, I, uh, I got like a 238 or something. Mm -hmm. And then did that. So then I, I took um, the actual SAT. And first time I got a 2340. Mm -hmm. I lost points in the writing section because of the essay. Yeah. And uh, that was like, okay, it's good, but maybe I could do better on the ACT. So I took the ACT and I got the 36 mm -hmm. and I went with them. And did you take any subject tests? Like usually I did take two subject yeah. tests. Okay. I took the math two subject test and I took the chemistry subject test mm -hmm. with 800s in both. Yeah, I'm assuming 800s in both. What do you think was like the most important thing, I guess, or something that really helped you stand out or get in? I think it was the Olympiad. I think it was the chemistry Olympiad. Olympiad. It was making it to top 20 in the country and also the chemistry research that I did, which I was only able to do because I had done chemistry. Okay. Yeah, that's how I got So, pretty yeah. good. Yeah, I would have only been accepted to work at that lab if I demonstrated something like that. Okay, and where did you so, work? Did you... So, I worked at Caltech okay. with the uh, his McGill group. They're, mm -hmm. they're not purely chemistry, but they do sort of like chem chemical, biological engineering. Mm -hmm. Okay, and when did you do that? I did this the summer after junior year. So okay. it was like after the chemistry oh, okay. camp. Yeah. I got done with that and I went off to do the research. Okay. So just based on obviously your experience and also I guess you probably I don't know, have you really heard about other people's experiences throughout with high school, like while you were on MIT? Not so much. Because no, it's not something it's not something it. really people really talk, talk about, about all that much. Okay. So it, it just it's honestly it's, it's really like, up to like the high it. school. People came from all different sorts of high schools, mm -hmm. so like it's it's always a, it's always sort of achievable within reach if you do the most that you can within that environment and you do stuff outside of the school. Because if you say like, oh, I can't get into MIT because my school doesn't offer Calc BC, well, people take Calculus one at MIT. Like yeah. people sometimes show up not having taken Calculus. Like mm -hmm. you know what happens. You just have to do stuff outside of school which demonstrates your abilities in STEM. If if the school doesn't have the ability for you to like, you know, spread your wings, like to do <laughs> big things, you have yeah. to do big things outside of school. That's the okay. only option. Uh, do you have any other tips for high school students? Just in general, I guess like yeah. senior year, junior year, surviving. I mean, yeah, I guess I mean I guess it sounds kinda easy to say for from coming from me, but like yeah. you have to Having passion helps. Like have like not doing things just to check things off like the list. Yeah. Like I was only able to study chemistry as much as I did because I read two books that made me fall in love with chemistry. 
and because I have like I, like you know like I talked to chemists like I, I sort of like I sort of felt like this was like it sounds cheesy but it's like I sort of felt like this was like my destiny like this was like yeah. what I was put on earth to do because I had I had read like really beautiful like poetic books about the science yeah and that's part of it like you have to you have to find you have to find a real spark because once you have that spark it will light a fire and that fire will show up it will show up in the way you write about things it will show up in the way you talk about things it will show up in your interviews yeah like people can tell whether you're faking it a lot of the time i think there's a lot of like a lot of people will legit like because people are frantic like trying to get into good colleges like it's like a thing of social mobility it's very important yeah but sometimes people go to like desperate measures with it like they really pad they really pad their resumes and stuff with honestly with bs and they pretend to have interests that they don't have and they pretend to be people who they're not and that is n not as good in the end as you know trying to be the best you can be and finding finding something that drives you to to be that person which is like, of course, like, I say this, but it's so much easier said than done. Yeah, because, I mean, also there is the fact yeah. that there's a lot of high school students who also don't really know what they want to do. Yeah, this is exactly yeah, like... Yeah, it's like 99%. How could, yeah, how could yeah. you reasonably figure out like what you want to do in high school? You've been exposed to only high school classes. Yeah. High school classes teach you practically <laughs> nothing about the world. Like, you, yeah. you understand, like, only the tiniest sliver. <laughs> And then you get into the big world of like college and stuff and you realize like, wow, I didn't know anything. And then you learn basically like for the rest of your life that you know nothing. I still but know you know, nothing yet. You know slightly something slightly about yet. nothing in one particular area. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully this was helpful um, and at least someone out there will find this useful. <laughs> um, so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. So bye guys.